Good stuff. <clears throat> Shall we get this intro rolling, ladies and gentlemen? Hey guys, it's is me. It's Francis sixty nine coming at you with another little vlog on this again very cold Friday night. I do not know why the cold is sticking with us so, but uh It is vehemently trying to hold on to uh, to its last breaths, as it were. Um, so, shall we dive in? What are we drinking and what are we smoking tonight? Tonight we are smoking a Romeo and Julieta Real Reserva, or Reserva Real cigar. Very, very good. Very, very mild. Very nice little smoke. This is a Churchill size. Why am I drinking? Of course, everyone knows that one of my favorite liqueurs is uh, Dern Walker Black because it is very reminiscent uh, of a rum and very easy to uh, to consume in vast quantities. Um, and I get bored of it. Um, and it also... <laughs> And also cleanses the palate uh, very well. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm not uh, inebriated. I'm just starting to drink. So, uh, this video might be a little long in the tooth because um, I'm not going to be able to be more animated than I usually am uh, when uh, partaking of alcohol. It might take me a little bit, a little while to get uh, to get drunk. So, what shall we talk about tonight? Well, I think we're going to talk about two figures. Leonid Toptanov and Francis Moira Crozier. So let's start with the first one, Leonid Toptanov. Now, if you guys haven't seen, and I talked about this in the last video, um, Chernobyl, go watch it right now, and then come back and watch this video. Leonid Toptanov was, I believe, 23 or 24 uh, when he passed away due to acute radiation sickness. He died of radiation poisoning from the explosion at Chernobyl. He was the senior reactor something anyway he was in control of the control rods uh, pulling them and putting them back in the reactor that whole instrument he was of 23 years old and he was put in con control of a nuclear reactor he had less than three months experience in the job when chernobyl blew up To me, he's always been a tragic figure because I've read about Dyatlov and I've read about Akimov, his compatriot. Uh, Akimov is basically, was basically um, his uh, Tartanov's superior, but Dyatlov was Akimov's superior in the room that night. But Dyatlov basically forced, you know, they, they were not prepared for this test. They essentially, they didn't know this was going to be happening. They essentially said, oh, we're doing this test as they're getting into the room, as they're getting prepared. They were not prepared for this test. Thusly, that's why the reactor exploded. They had never conducted this test. They were inexperienced because why would, uh, you know, experienced group need to be on the night shift? You know, you just need to know the basics of how a reactor works. That's why Dyatlov was there that night. It was because he wanted to oversee the test. And as worth noting, Dyatlov 
had an ill temper to begin with, uh, and he believed a lot of his staff members were complete numbnuts, as it were, um, and that there are some more harsh and brutal words to describe uh, how uh, Dyatlov treated his staff. But to compound the fact, he had not slept for two days straight. He got very little sleep. He was more ill-tempered than ever. He did not like Topinov or uh, yeah, Leonid Topinov to begin with. He didn't like him. And that is why Topinov pleaded with Dyatlov, we have to shut down. Akimov pleaded with Dyatlov, shut it down. We are in a Zenon pit. And Top or uh, Dyatlov had previous experience uh, in the Soviet uh, nuclear sub uh, business, I think. Nuclear submarine enterprise. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that one took me a little bit back. Um, the drink, I mean. <laughs> um, essentially. Um, or was I? Nuclear submarine, right? Um, so they conduct the test, and it blows up. Dyatlov survives somehow. I don't know. I think it's somewhere in the medical records. I'd have to check. I don't remember. I don't recall how he survived, but he did. But Toptonov and Akimov both died horrible deaths. Um, I mean, they suffered when they died. No doubt about it. They just suffered. I mean, just a, a horrific death. No man deserves that. The Adolf. He was responsible for the explosion, but it was the Soviet state who was ultimately responsible for the events at Chernobyl. So scaling back hundreds, hundred years, give or take a couple, to the Franklin Expedition, who was in control of the Franklin Expedition, well, that would be Sir John Franklin. Now, Sir John Franklin is a teetotaler, so that means he does not consume alcohol. He does not c consume cigars. He does not consume any uh, what would be considered in the Christian Christian world as sinful. Back then, uh, and in today, there are teetotalers, and I completely disagree with them. I was a teetotaler for 20, uh, 20 years. And I believe whiskey is essential to life. Um, well, not essential, but essentially, well, not essentially, but almost. I could do without it, but there's nothing quite like a long day's work piled on top of like a long day, a long week. You sit down, you got a cigar in front of you, or whatever you enjoy, right? Yeah, for me, a cigar sitting right there, a glass of whiskey, and you just light it up. You take your first puff, and you just smell the aroma of the cigar. Anyway, enough about teetotaling. Uh, so Franklin led the expedition. Now, if you're not familiar with the series called The Terror, it's on Hulu. Go watch it. Um, and there's also a book called The Terror. Uh, pardon. Uh, pardon. And both are very accurate to each other. I did a little bit of research. But Crozier is this badass figure, in my opinion. He's almost a tragic character, but he's in the books... 
And we're, we're going to be basing our judgment off the books and the TV show, not reality. Because it's hard to find uh, sources about Crozier besides his besides the show and the book. So in the book, he's... He's addicted to alcohol. He has got an alcoholic problem. In the show, it's less sympathetic to the alcoholism. Crozier decides to go off the drink because he's out of whiskey. In the book, he's out of whiskey and he has this moment in the book, I believe he says something like, Francis Mara Groden Crozier, last of the balls are drunk. When the last of the last are drank, drunk, he will cock his pistol and blow his brains out. He'll commit suicide. Instead, he goes on sobriety. He, uh, what's the term? Um, detoxification or something like that. Anyway, um, the words are eluding me. But uh, essentially, he goes on that. And he goes through this process like visions and all this stuff in the book. It's really interesting to, to, to listen to. But it, it's before... Is it after? I don't remember. I think it's after he goes through his... After the Venetian Carnival thing. But Sir John Franklin, I hate. I despise that loaded, pompous piece of human refuse, etc., etc. He literally let his men into a trap. He literally killed hundreds of men. There you go. That's what I think about Sir John Franklin. <laughs> I mean, the book and the show are pretty clear that you know, a lot of the officers felt that way. They didn't have the supplies. They were slowly being poisoned. Now, is it true that Sir John, or probably if Francis Crozier survived? No. Uh, I tend to believe he probably cocked that pistol and blew his brains out. As he was slowly starving to death. And suffering from scurvy at court. But Crozier is one of my role models. Not the alcoholism. No, forget it. I am not going to become an alcoholic. I'm not dependent on alcohol. Do I drink every day today? No. Do I drink every Friday? Uh-huh. Almost every single Friday you will find me with a glass of whiskey. Or a glass of something good. But am I dependent on alcohol? I pity those who are. I pity those who are. And who don't smoke well, drink well, and who drink and drive. And again, smoking does kill. This thing right here is a little death. It's a little indulgence that I take a part of more than often than... More often than I should. And I think this will, will. Where we will leave it tonight. My gosh. I am having the time of my life with my words. I completely just stumble over my senses. I'm eager to. Get it all out. And one. <laughs> and my tongue just trips over itself. Trying to get out my words. And only when I'm inebriated. Am I able to pontificate my words anyway guys I hope you all have a pleasant evening smoke well drink well again don't drink and drive I will find you I will find you and I will do what Jason or whatever serial killer you know well, not real serial killer but like a like a Chucky or you know Jason or whatever you know those people, I will, I will come for you. <laughs> anyway, 
hopefully you guys enjoy a good evening drink well don't drink and drive i'll catch you and again this thing and everything via smoking kills hope you guys have a good evening this is 69 signing off for now